Once street thugs, these two henchmen volunteered to be experimented on, with the sole condition of getting revenge on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, if you were turned into a warthog or a rhinoceros as a result of that experiment, you'd probably feel a little inconvenienced. But not these guys. Then again, they're not exactly known for their instincts or cleverness. Today, I'll be talking about the original, Bebop and Rocksteady. These characters were first based on sketches provided by Peter Laird as proposed mutants for the 1988 toy line. However, their creation resulted from a collaboration effort, including John Handy, Errol McCarthy, and possibly others. But it wasn't until David Wise and Patty Howitt got involved that the two characters got their backstory, personalities, and names. If you're not familiar with the origins of their names, Bebop is a style of jazz from the mid-40s, characterized by its fast tempo and improvisational nature. Rocksteady, on the other hand, is a music genre that originated in Jamaica in the 60s. It's a precursor to reggae and successor to ska. It's slower than ska and focuses more on the bass and rhythm guitar. In any case, artist and toy designer Mark Taylor came in by the end of the collaboration process and gave the two characters their distinctive looks. Bebop was primarily voiced by Barry Gordon, who also voiced Donatello. Rocksteady was voiced by Cam Clark, who also voiced Leonardo. While these characters were initially humans, many writers, including David Wise, would get them confused from time to time and write them as animals who turned into humanoids. Well, now that we've gotten all the exposition out of the way, what do we do next? Let's take a look at their origin story. Bebop and Rocksteady were part of a gang of criminals who worked for the Foot Clan, similar to the Purple Dragons in many of the franchise's universes. Other members of this gang were Scrag, Grunt, Dopey, and Dumbo. Over time, we met other gang members, like Lugnut, Jersey Red, and High Five. Bebop, Rocksteady, and their gang were the criminals who intimidated April O'Neil in the first episode of the cartoon. Their defeat was also our introduction to the Four Turtles, their weapons, and their personalities. Having discovered they were facing mutant Ninja Turtles, Krang convinced Shredder to escalate their efforts to making their own mutants. Two Roadkill Rodneys were sent to take a Warthog and Rhinoceros from the zoo. Having the animals, all Shredder needed now was two volunteers. He visited the gang and asked them who wanted revenge on the turtles. While the two didn't seem too pleased with the strange experiment, they immediately embraced their new nature. A reason for them to feel this way was that their strength increased, something they seemed to value more than their looks, which, to be honest, wasn't that great anyway. But while the mutagen enhanced their strength, it did nothing to improve their intellect. This fundamental flaw in their design resulted in many failed missions, with hilarious results. Despite this, Shredder and Krang kept them around because of their great strength and loyalty. Yeah, do no muscle and no brains. I won't say it, it's too easy. The rest of the gang was also mutated, but they may have demutated, like Scrag, as part of the Shredder's experiments to bait Splinter. It's worth saying that loyalty wasn't always enough for Shredder and Krang, and on many occasions they felt the need to retire the duo. In the episode Super Bebop and Mighty Rock Steady, Krang created two cybernetic clones of them named Super Rock Steady and Mighty Bebop, which directly contradicts the title card of this episode. It seemed like they were going to succeed, but their being machines was a challenge that Donatello couldn't refuse. We would see Human Bebop and Rock Steady again in the fourth season premiere, when Krang made them look like humans, temporarily, to kidnap the Channel 6 building. If you're interested to know why, it's because they needed the technology in it, but for the most part, it's because they wanted revenge. All they needed to do was install some transwarp thrusters in the basement of the building, but they found it challenging to enter Channel 6, and to get inside, they asked for a job. They immediately became janitors. But while doing this, they messed up the whole programming schedule. After they rearranged it, Byrne Thompson decided to promote them, the most iconic moment of the episode happened when they were displeased with the performance of the Idaho Potatoes, some parody of the California Raisins. They kicked the original performers and got inside the potato suits. Appearing in front of the camera revealed their true identities, and everything went downhill from there. Bebop and Rocksteady started feeling unappreciated from time to time. In one mission, they took advantage of the fear-inducing weapon, the Anxiotron Ray, to paralyze their targets with fear. They took over the city and scared Shredder, Krang, and the Turtles away. But they were destined to fail. If it hadn't been because Zack stole the ray from them, it would have been because Krang found a way to reverse the effect. They were taken back to the Technodrome where they'd be grounded. 
During their downtime, Bebop and Rocksteady would be used as janitors at the Technodrome, despite the existence of the Footbots. This makes me think that Shredder and Krang simply made them do these tasks to keep them busy, or to ground them. One day, Bebop had an idea to create their own mutant to do the work for them. Having only his pet turtle Slash, they proceeded to mutate him. This went wrong quickly, and they had to get rid of the new mutant. I already talked about Super Rocksteady and Mighty Bebop, but those were only the names of their cyber clones. The real duo would get their chance to have superhero names. In the episode Rhino Man, Shredder and Krang forced the duo to pass as superheroes to win the Maladrop Diamond in a contest to become the best superhero in the city. They were transformed into Rhino Man and Mighty Hog. These two were made into action figures in 1993. They actually won the contest, but it was all a farce to make them and the rest of the city into zombies. Well, at least something good came out of it, boys. We are never going straight again. The friendship between Bebop and Rocksteady would be put to the test in the episode Atlantis Awakes. In that story, Shredder ran into Atlantis, and its inhabitants confused Bebop with their long-lost king, who was supposed to look like a monster. This made Rocksteady jealous and sad, as he also looked like a monster, but the Atlanteans saw Bebop first. Bebop became the king of Atlantis, which served the Shredder's plan of stealing their giant gem. His farce ended when Murdude returned and challenged him to a duel for the throne. Bebop lost, and they had to escape from the city. The last appearance of these characters in the Fred Wolf cartoon was at the end of the eighth season, when the Technodrome was trapped and dragged into the depths by a plant creature on the planet Bellarophon in Dimension X. While Shredder and Krang would make a return later for the last season, it would take several years to see Bebop and Rocksteady again. Their first official return was in the Turtles Forever movie, where they became Shirelle's henchmen. Unfortunately for this version of Shredder, they were also his doom as they accidentally killed him, saving the Turtleverse. The place of this adventure in the continuity of the Fred Wolf cartoon is uncertain. It probably happened during the first three seasons or in a spin-off universe. It's perhaps best not to think too much about it. Their next appearance was in the 2012 series, where Shredder and Krang took the Technodrome to that other universe, leaving them behind. In the 2012 universe, Shredder and Krang recruited the local version of Bebop and Rocksteady, who were much more efficient. Unfortunately for them, the duo also had more self-respect and wouldn't do housekeeping work. The local version of Bebop and Rocksteady would help the two sets of turtles to destroy the Technodrome. When the turtles returned to the Fred Wolf universe with Shredder and Krang, they ran into the duo again. The turtles convinced them that after seeing the other version of them, they didn't have to tolerate Shredder and Krang anymore and should consider being something else. Rocksteady expressed his dream of becoming a personal injury lawyer and Bebop talked about his fantasy of becoming a dancer. Since the Technodrome was destroyed in this episode, I also have to consider this a spin-off universe of the Fred Wolf cartoon, or in a far future of that timeline where some things went full circle. You can still see this version of Bebop and Rocksteady in the pages of Saturday Morning Adventures. It may or may not be the same universe, but they're basically the same characters. Bebop and Rocksteady can be seen as the essence of the Fred Wolf cartoon. Despite their low intellect, viewers can easily identify with them. Especially kids, since Bebop and Rocksteady love candies, comic books, action figures, and cartoons. Fans of the more serious adventures of the Ninja Turtles sometimes have problems accepting them into their favorite universes. But I feel like after all these years, most fans are okay with them. And just by looking at how their action figures sell out, they become fan favorites. I'll cover other versions of these characters in future videos. But what about you? Do you like these characters? And which is your favorite version of Bebop and Rocksteady? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the sewers.